Let's do it. Uh, it's 3.01 Pacific time. Um, if you are in other time zones, thank you for joining from all other time zones. Uh, hello, hello. This is our we pause number 10. Uh, this is the end of our uh, beta testing of this project. I'm so excited. We've learned uh, so many great things as far as like what we can do even in 30 minutes. I think uh, there, there's a there's a lot of opportunities to expand this to bigger event, uh, bigger events, including in person and like longer sessions that are like toward a specific goal. We'll have more updates on that soon. Also, if you like to stay after this call, just like what we do almost every week, please stay and we'll love to hear your thoughts on how how you would like this to go for you uh, as we expand it to future projects with we pause. Um, so I'm not going to include that conversation now because we love to start our practice and enjoy this time that we have together. So today I'm going to be first guiding a five minute meditation. I think, uh, it's, it's hopefully a good one. It's, it's one of my favorites. Um, uh, and then after that, I have a quick presentation about why I think everyone is an artist and how, uh, we can actually become an artist. We practice something together and if you like, we then share our reflections. So let's actually start with our meditation. If you don't have pen and paper, you can get it after your meditation. Right now, just relax, find a comfortable position. Um, if you like to be lying down, please do turn off your camera, whatever it's comfortable for you. Close your eyes and Take a few deep breath. Yep. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Try to release any tension if you feel any. It's been a Long week for some of us. And continue this pattern a few times. Now, with the next breath, Bring your focus to this moment. I call it the best moment. Bring your focus to your feelings and sensations in this moment. As you breathe in and out, notice if there's a connection between any of these sensations and feelings and just observe them. If there is none, you still have your breath. Try to see what is an emotion you're experiencing right now. It could be happiness, sadness, anxiety, or anything like that. Allow yourself to fully experience it. What does that even mean for you to fully experience that feeling in this moment? Notice where you sense that feeling in your body. Is it in your chest, stomach, throat? 
Simply observe it. As you hold this awareness about your feelings, just remind yourself that all emotions are valid. They are part of us and defining us as a human being. You can't and you don't have to fix them. You can't or you don't have to change them. What you can do is just truly and fully acknowledge them. How does that feel? Now... Focus on a memory or experience that brings you love, awareness, or joy. This memory or experience could be in a form of a person, a place, a beautiful moment that you experienced maybe in the past week or so. Let this memory or experience blend in with your body and find a place in your presence. Where is it going to sit? Where are you feeling that memory sitting down? Does it result into any feeling? Feel that feeling. Take a few more deep breaths. And again, let go of any tension you may feel. Whenever you feel ready, you can slowly start opening your eyes. Look around. Dance around. Shake it off whatever brings you to a good feeling that you want to experience after this quick meditation. And thank you for experiencing that with me. All right. And as we were meditating, a few others joined. Welcome, welcome. Today's topic is about the fact that you are an artist and we want to see how we can become an artist. Uh, those who know me, I know myself and sometimes I introduce myself as an artist. Um, and here's a reason. I think all of us are artists. We have an artist within that we can wake it up. And I couldn't, I, I'm, I may have felt it like growing up, but I couldn't understand it until uh, when I started going to the design school uh, and I started um, hanging out with my advisor, Professor Haywood, who was a psychologist. And he, through a couple of activities, he helped me and hundreds of other students wake up their uh, artist inside and the child inside, which I think is related to the 
uh, artists inside. So, and I really, I, I don't think I could be here today with wherever I am as far as like my mental health state without these activities and his guidance. So first of all, big shout out to him for being a true advisor and also like really building um, something for all of his students. And uh, when I was like recently reading some of my uh, notes from that time um, and sort of like remembering some of the books, another friend also like started reading this book and reminded me about this book. Um, I, it started like actually awakening some new uh, understanding and uh, connections to what I learned from him. And it's all going to make sense. Let me actually share my screen. I have a quick presentation, as I always do. So um, this actually reminded, this experience reminded me of this book that he was using multiple times in the class, which is uh, The Artist's Way. And I think some of you may have already either, either read this went through it yes and by julia cameron she's amazing you may have read it already you may have experienced it. you may have been to workshops that uh, they've been teaching this this is probably one of the most important books to work with if, if you're on a path to uh, connect to yourself doesn't matter if you are an artist or not if your job is an art i definitely recommend it and there are two uh, basic activities that julia cameron uh, is introducing in this book that I think uh, not only helped me to awaken my artist insight, but also I know for a fact it helped many others. She also talks about like some of the biggest writers in the history, uh, in the, the uh, contemporary history that have been using this uh, method to awaken their inner artists. And I felt these are great practices. And I have recently started writing again uh, based on this method that uh, Julia Cameron is suggesting in this book. So there are two activities that she's suggesting uh, to do on a regular basis. One is morning pages, and the other one is artist state. And the purpose of doing these activities is to try to connect to our consciousness, try to be more aware of what we feel inside, and seek new things from outside. So it's like this very nice, fulfilling process of being more connected to ourselves and understand what's happening inside, uh, be uh, whining and like just say whatever we have to say in every morning. I talk about a little bit uh, in the next few slides. And then every, every once in a while, go out and seek new artistic things and bring them home to be more inspired and more connected to the world around you. So I love that kind of like um, combination of inner work and outer work. And I think that's that's how you can easily uh, awaken your artist. I did this very heavily through my master thesis, like about ten years ago, where I was going through a lot of like uh, problems personally from like personal side. Like I lost my dad in the same year, and it was a tough time. But going through morning pages, writing two to three pages every morning, taking myself to artist state it really started like helping me let go of like those negative thoughts. I, I was really facing them. I was writing about them on a daily basis. But really that process of like letting things go, giving them a space helped me to get connected to what I really needed to do to get graduated, to find a job, to write my thesis and all of those things within a very short amount of time. So I hope when you do it, uh, in the daily process, you get the results that me and so many other people have been getting from this. Um, so let's go a little bit in more detail about like what are morning pages, what is an artist date. And to this date, I still try to do an artist date once a week. Some people know this fact about me as well. It's so fun. I know, again, some of you in this crowd may already do this as well. Uh, the first one, morning pages at, or Actually, as Julia Cameron calls it, morning pages, a process to say farewell to life as you know it and an introduction to life as it's going to be. So these are like very loud and like very whiny, very like not creative three pages that you'd write every morning. You wake up in the morning, either right after your wake up, uh, experience, which oftentimes we have a lot of like feelings and emotions in those moments. 
at least I do. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if it's normal or not, but I do. So when I wake up, I try to like find my way or after coffee, like write down those three pages. I found it best time is actually right after waking up and just write down, write down about like today. Hey, another day started and I feel this. I feel so, uh, or I don't want to do this. Oftentimes you will feel that these are all going to be maybe all negative thoughts that you have uh, during in the beginning of your day. And don't think that they're going to be, don't push it to become arty or creative writing that you're going to publish. As a matter of fact, she's recommending that to not even look at it for years and put it aside. I still haven't looked at what I wrote down during my uh, thesis time 10 years ago back in Arizona. I still haven't touched that notebook. So I highly recommend it. Just write and go. And they're not going to be artful. Just deal with it. Like it's going to be your worst writing of all time. But just write down, never look back. And when you do this, you will feel that like connection to your consciousness. You will feel eventually that like you're letting go and saying goodbye to a lot of things that like during the day are bothering you, like some thoughts and like some open-ended conversations that you have with pieces of your inner child. When you have those resolved, then creative thoughts come up. Then you become more productive. And please, please just try it for 30 days. If you didn't see the result, uh, call me and we'll have a talk. This is definitely going to work. Uh, second one, and actually, I wanted to call out something. One thing that I found out that works very well for me is this inner dialogue that uh, Julia also recommends in her book. Um, as part of writing morning pages, she is recommending to talk to your little version. So to me, that's little Ali. Sometimes this is conversations like this happen to me where I say, I'm so tired of repeating this pattern in my life. What can I do, LA, like little Ali? And LA writes it back to me, like just really giving that inner child even a line, even a name that they can write back to you. You see that I notice even my handwriting shifts when I write uh, on behalf of LA. And it's so fascinating. I, I, I first thought like there is a little bit of a bias happening, but like there are conversations, there are long conversations sometimes between Ali and LA that is so funny that the, uh, the typo is, is even changing. Like it's, it's really fascinating when you give that person inside a name as well. So going to go to the next one because of the time, but I'm, as you see, I'm just too excited about these things. Um, and the second one is artist state, which I want to call out. It's both um, impo the importance of artist and date. So it's a combo of those two. It's like dating yourself. It's like taking yourself out for something that helps you awaken your consciousness, S something that helps you refill and connect to the world uh, around you. It can be like a Play, uh, play, a plan a, a place that you go once a week. It can be the same place. It can be new places. I know Emily likes to go to coffee shops, for example. I like to. Like sometimes you can just go to a coffee shop and just sit down, look around. Um, if you see anything, like if you may even see like a bag of coffee that has like a nice design, interact with it intentionally. Anything that you do to, feel, to fulfill uh, your artistic self, to try to like connect to new things that you've never discovered before from the artistic perspective, that counts as a date. But plan it. Put it in a plan for like once a week. Like maybe it's a Friday morning. Maybe given your schedule, it's a Monday afternoon. It doesn't matter when it is or where it is. It can be a museum. Like if you're super artsy and love high arts, go for it. Go for big museums and like enjoy it. But give yourself 90 minutes to two hour to just hang around, look at things with a purpose of what's new and like what is this design or what it, what's artsy about this or not. It doesn't even have to be like crazy art. Like just try to discover what art means to you. I don't want to bias you. So these are some of the examples I wrote down, like going to a museum, going to a coffee shop, walking around with the goal of finding new objects. That one is very fun. Um, so with this in mind, 
Uh, and if there's no questions uh, that is blocking this activity, happy to also like have more discussions after. I have two requests here. One is for the next five to 10 minutes, uh, write as much as you can as if you are whining about your day or week. Just be as whiny as you can. See how it feels. And I want you to, if you don't have a pen and paper, pick it up, uh, give yourself a few seconds, pick it up, turn off your camera if that makes it easier for you to feel whiny. And then second, uh, in the second page maybe, just write a plan, a simple plan. For example, going to a coffee shop next Tuesday, taking myself to a museum on the next Tuesday and just commit to it. Sign it and keep it until next week. So that's our fun activity today.
All right. Uh, since we only have a few minutes, um, first of all, thank you for hanging out with these experiences with me. I also like wanted to show you like this is the type of notebook that um, recomm- that was recommended by my mentor like back in days. I never did that back then, but now that I'm using it, like these rolling sort of like uh, notebooks, you can only like write on one side of them. And then when you flip it, it's done. So you don't have to even look at like what you what you wrote down, like, and then you can just keep rolling them and they go to the next one, rolling next one. So um, and then uh, try try to find like what's working because uh, Stino style. Yes, Stino style. Thank you. Yeah. Order one of these uh, Stino books and that should do it. And if that didn't work for you, try to like change it because sometimes like these little things impact your writing and how easy you can whine uh, and not look at. That's one point. Also wanted to see if anyone wanted to share any reflection uh, either on item number one or uh, number two uh, on the assignments we had right now. I don't know if today is just a good day, but I felt like I didn't have that much to whine about. So I was happy about that. (laughs) Nice. Uh, Is there a date that you want to take yourself on? Um, I didn't write an actual date because yoga teacher training is honestly taking up like my entire life, but I'm sure there'll be like a lot of like introspection, introspection and like meditation during that. So I feel like that's a way to connect with it. But once yoga teacher training is done, I definitely would want to explore some more museums in Seattle because I haven't done that much yet. (laughs) Nice. I feel like, Amanda, you and I are on, like, the same wavelength today. Um, I had a great day. It was just, like, so spacious. So I, like, I was, like, trying to find things to whine about, which was also an interesting practice. And then... um, And it was funny how, you know, how often our brain leaves the present moment to then go future. So it was interesting, like finding things to whine about is a past experience, right? You're pulling at past experiences versus being in the present. And then so quickly, I just moved into the future and like trying to plan, like, what am I going to do on Sunday morning? Because I have uh, some free time before I see my mom. And, uh, And then I was thinking that maybe that would be my artist date. There's this really cute park um, because nature for me is always inspiring. So there's this really cute park nearby uh, with like actual forested areas, which is beautiful in Redwood City, Stolsaft, if you haven't been, highly recommend. Uh, And I can take my little dog. So I'm going to do that for my artist date. Um, Unlike Emily and Amanda, I had a rough day today. So I got to write um, a lot. Nice. Um, and I'm planning to go to this little um, bookstore, like a bookshop, um, tomorrow. So I hope I can go without my kids. So that's the plan, right? It has to be this way. So no. Yes. And that's a good Mother's Day gift as well. Happy Mother's Day. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you apply it. I'm a still trying to like honestly figure it out for myself so we're in this journey together as uh, practicing these tools that are in our hand so let me know if you had any reflection on these specific ones because they are my favorites like i talk about them almost everywhere uh so um yeah we'd love to hear about this specific uh, experience we had together thank you for joining and as always we stay and i'm gonna pause uh, the recording we're going to stay on the call. If you like to help me uh, figure out what else you like to see on WePause in the future as we ending uh, beta officially right now, I uh, would love to hear from you. But if you have anything to do, uh, I say goodbye to all of you and uh, wishing you an amazing weekend. Thanks, Ali. This was great.